hey, it's your friendly neighborhood immunologist, and I'm gonna tell you why you should not take Tylenol or any type of anti-inflammatory before you get the COVID mRNA vaccine. It's really important, and I'm gonna show you why. Okay, so you've booked your vaccine appointment, and you go into the doctor's office, and you receive an injection that contains the COVID mRNA vaccine. And all that means is you've received a code that your cells are going to translate from mRNA into a protein. That protein is the COVID spike protein. So it comes in these fat bubbles that can enter any of your cells rather rapidly. It needs to be turned from an mRNA into a protein. But once it's turned into a protein by your cells, I'm drawing them as these little strings of amino acids, which are the backbone of protein. So the protein molecules can be recognized both inside and outside of your immune cells. So if other immune cells or other cells of your tissue are making the COVID spike protein, it could bind to the outside of an immune cell, such as a macrophage. And again, that means um, large eater, or it could be binding to something inside of your cell. It doesn't matter. Um, once the mRNA code has been turned into the COVID spike protein, your immune cells are gonna immediately identify it as viral, as dangerous, and they're gonna do two things for you. They're gonna create inflammation in the form of cytokines, which are small molecules immune cells can use to talk to each other. But you're also gonna get hormone-like molecules. And they're great because they can travel long distances in the bloodstream. And if you're wondering about the specifics, I'll give those to you. Um, the hormone-like molecules that are best at performing this type of inflammatory job are called prostaglandins. Okay, so mRNA vaccine has been turned into the COVID spike protein. Your immune cells have recognized them as viral proteins, which are dangerous. Then they've made you cytokines and they've made you hormone-like molecules. That's great. So these combination of cytokines and hormone-like molecules they're gonna circulate throughout your entire body's bloodstream and eventually they're going to access a deep brain region called the hypothalamus. Now the hypothalamus is in charge of thirst, hunger, sleep, but most importantly for the vaccine, body temperature. So let me spell hypothalamus for you. All right, so at this point, you're gonna be experiencing a fever. Your cytokines and hormone-like molecules have told that deep brain region, the hypothalamus, to crank up your body temperature. And when that happens, you're going to make more immune cells. You're gonna be making more of those antibodies, which can catch and bind to viruses before they enter your cells. Um, you're also gonna be making more immune memory, meaning that your immune cells are going to remember COVID-19 for a longer period of time. All right, that all sounds pretty good, right? But you took Tylenol. What does that mean? Uh, you heard that the side effects were pretty awful, and you knew that if you took Tylenol ahead of time, you probably wouldn't get a fever. You probably wouldn't get those muscle aches and chills but I'm gonna show you why that's a terrible idea. All right, so here's your Tylenol pill. Um, you might've heard of Tylenol also called acetaminophen or even paracetamol. I am not gonna spell those for you. I will spell Tylenol. All right, and actually any non-inflammatory or <laughs> non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, any of the NSAIDs can perform these functions, but we're gonna specifically focus on Tylenol. So I told you over here, when this little blue protein called a receptor identified the COVID spike protein, it actually started a relay race. You don't need to know all the molecules, 
But you know, there's like four or five molecules that hand off signals until it gets inside of your cell. This deep part of your cell is called the nucleus, and this is where your DNA is contained. And your DNA basically holds all of your codes that can be turned from DNA into mRNA and then mRNA into protein. Now, this handoff comes to the DNA and it basically tells it to make cytokines. The exact mechanism of how Tylenol stops cytokines isn't completely known. But basically, if you had Tylenol, you were going to be making way, 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 way less cytokines. All right, so Tylenol equals less cytokines. But there's another mechanism that's very well studied. And what happens here is um, your cells actually borrow a little bit of the membrane here, a little bit of your lipids or fats. And um, let me see if I could scoot this up a little bit. And there's a series of steps, just like the relay race with the cytokines, where um, you take some of your cell wall and you turn it into the hormone-like molecules. I'm just gonna abbreviate this, hormone-like molecules. And remember, uh, I told you specifically, the name here is prostaglandins. And there's a special prostaglandin called uh, PGE2, which is really great at inducing fever, which now you know is a good thing, at least after a vaccination. So here, there's a special enzyme, I'm not going to spell this, cyclooxygenase, one, two, and three. And these are actually known as the COX enzymes. So Tylenol comes in here, and this is the best known mechanism of Tylenol working, and it just straight up inhibits all of these COX enzymes. And what that means is you're not making hormone-like molecules with Tylenol. And I know it seems like I'm picking on Tylenol, but any of the uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs will work in a similar way. So now you have less cytokines. You have virtually no hormone-like molecules to travel to the bloodstream. The hypothalamus is not gonna know to raise your body temp. And if you didn't experience a high fever, um, if you didn't experience too many side effects because of Tylenol, potentially you're going to have less immune cells made by your bone marrow. You're going to have less antibodies made by your B cells. And you're also going to have decreased immune memory meaning that if you pre-gamed Tylenol, your memory response and your level of antibodies are going to be much less than somebody who took the vaccine and did not pre-game Tylenol. Um, however, it is known that as long as you've allowed for a fever to occur, so if you've pushed through the second vaccine, you've had a fever for a really long time, you know, 12 hours or so, you can take Tylenol because all of these things have already happened. Your hypothalamus has already gotten the signal to raise your body temp, which means you've made immune cells, antibodies, and memory. All right, so now that you know why you shouldn't take Tylenol before getting the vaccine, especially not the second shot, Honestly, you can probably wait it out about 12 hours if you can make it 24 hours. That's awesome. Uh, but you don't want to pregame because it basically cuts you off at the cytokine pathway and then you'll never make a really strong immune response, the kind of immune response you need for long-term protection from the COVID-19 virus. And if you want to know more about the side effects or the rarest side effect of all, uh, please click on my videos for side effects and for thrombocytopenia.